Hi there! Thanks again for joining me. My name is Megan Rosendahl. I am your crafting coach, back again this week with another exciting project. So I have a four-year-old and it is a constant struggle to keep all her books and games and toys organized. So what I found this week on Pinterest was a really fun project that keeps everything organized a lot better and it makes it look a heck of a lot prettier. This week we're going to make DIY fabric buckets. These buckets will be perfect for storing toys, gardening tools, anything else you can think of. So here's what you're going to need for this week's project. A five gallon bucket, fabric of your choosing, and Mod Podge. You're also going to need a scissors, a paintbrush, a pencil, and a tape measurer. First, I'm going to take a piece of yarn and measure around the bucket. I use yarn as it's easier to work with and then I just measure the yarn instead of the bucket. I'll start with measuring the diameter near the top of the bucket, then I'll measure at the bottom. Next, I'll measure the height of the bucket from just below the ridges. And finally, I'm going to be adding a ruffle to the top, so I'm going to measure how low I want the ruffles to go on the bucket. Once we have our measurements, we're ready to cut our fabric. I'm using a solid color for the base of the bucket, so we'll measure and cut that first. Start by putting Mod Podge on the very end of the fabric, then placing the fabric as straight as possible on the bucket. Make sure that this section is completely dry before moving on. Okay, while we're waiting for our first strip to dry, let's go ahead and do a bonus craft. I'm going to show you how to make your very own homemade Mod Podge. And all you need are three things. You need Elmer's school glue, water, and a jar to put it in. First, you're going to empty the Elmer's school glue into the jar and you're going to fill it about halfway full. Try not to go more than half because we're going to need equal parts glue and water to make our Mod Podge. Fill in water the rest of the way once you're done and then shake, shake, shake. We're gonna shake this glue until we can't shake it anymore. Honestly, you're gonna wanna shake it for a good minute or two straight to make sure that everything is completely dissolved together. All right, that's it. Let's go see how our fabric's doing. Now we can move on to covering the rest of the bucket. Now I recommend only applying the Mod Podge in sections no larger than two to four inches. As you're applying the fabric, be sure to stretch it tight and remove any air bubbles or ripples that might have formed. Be sure to press down firmly over the entire area before moving on to your next section. Something to keep in mind. When choosing fabrics for this, it's best not to get anything too thick or too thin. Now I just use what I had laying around the house and as you can see, it's a bit thin and you can see the lettering from the bucket underneath. Don't worry if that happens because it's still gonna turn out really cute. If you have extra fabric when you get to the end, just measure how much you'll need and then cut off the excess. Go ahead and apply your final strip of glue and you're done with the base. I measured how far I want my ruffles and now I just need to cut my fabric. Now I'm going to start just where the handle of the bucket is because this will make it easier to use the handle once I'm done. I'm going to start gluing my ruffles in about four inch sections, but feel free to make any size ruffles that you want. To make the ruffle, I'm going to fold a small piece over, however big or small you want, and I'm going to apply my Mod Podge directly to the fabric where I folded and then in addition to the bucket. Press down firmly so the entire piece sticks and when that's dried, you'll be left with a little flap that you've made. Go ahead and just apply your Mod Podge directly to the flap and stick that down as well. Again, be sure to make sure that this is completely dry. Now when I get to the other handle, I usually make a cut in my fabric here and then I start the process again. Again, this is just so it's easier to use the handle when I'm done. Is it necessary to do? Absolutely not. At the very end, I'll trim my fabric to the amount that I'll need, and I'll fold the fabric over the other way to complete my bucket. 
How stinking cute are these? And they're perfect for anything that you can think of. As long as it's smaller than a bread box, it's going to fit in one of these buckets. Go ahead and get creative. The nicest thing about this project is you can customize it any way you want. You can use whatever colors, whatever styles, whatever patterns. You can match it to your living room or your kids room. You can take it outside and give it an earth tone. Anything you want to do, the sky's the limit. Thank you again so much for joining me this week. I'll be back again next week with a brand new craft just for you. We'll tear it apart, we'll take a look at it, we'll tell you what to do, we'll tell you what not to do, and hopefully we'll have a little bit of fun along the way. Be sure to follow me on Pinterest. You can find me under Megan Rosendahl. Also be sure to follow the Aberdeen American News online at AberdeenNews.com, as well as on Facebook, where all of the Crafting Coach videos will be made ready for you. If you have any tips or suggestions or ideas, please don't hesitate to email me at mrosendahl at aberdeennews.com. We'll see you next time. Bye.